Hi, I'm Sarah Moulter, the Residency Program Director here at U of L, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our X plus Y scheduling. This is something that we get a lot of questions from applicants about, and it may be a little bit different than what you've experienced at your own institution. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. Bear with me. So X plus Y scheduling, what exactly is it? So we had been brainstorming about how to improve our resident outpatient clinic experience, and we were super excited to get the opportunity to participate in a national pilot study looking at a new way of scheduling residents. The whole point is to minimize conflict between inpatient and outpatient rotations and approve resident presence regardless of where they're rotating. The overarching principle of X plus Y scheduling is the separation of your inpatient and outpatient rotations and responsibilities. There are lots of different models and formulas. There's three plus one, four plus one, six plus two, et cetera, which is where it gets its name, X plus Y. And it's not necessarily a new thing. It's actually been studied in other subspecialties, particularly in internal medicine, with some good outcomes, including improved continuity with patients, improved improved continuity with learning, improved resident and fa faculty satisfaction, and decreased resident stress levels. So our formula is 6x plus 2y. So what exactly does that mean in terms of your day-to-day -day life as a resident? So the 6x, those are your inpatient service months, core subspecialties, and international rotations. 2Y are your outpatient focused rotations, such as newborn nursery, adolescent, behavior and development. With this particular formula, you'll do six weeks worth of inpatient rotations and responsibilities, followed by two weeks of outpatient rotations and responsibilities. If you look here on this screen, you can see a sample resident schedule. This is a block schedule for the whole year. Each small box is a two week rotation. So if you look at this one right here, you'll see the resident is going X, 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 Y, X, 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 Y, and so on. For some residents, it may be Y, X, 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 Y, X, X, X. For some, it may be X, X, Y, X, 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 Y, X. You get the picture, but you as an individual will keep the same cadence of rotations throughout your entire year. So what kinds of rotations are X? What kinds of rotations are Y? So you can see here that you'll have some rotations, and I swear this is not a genetics lecture, by the way, um, we'll call 2X or XX rotations. These are full month rotations, and most of the time these are going to be your inpatient service months, like wards, PICU, and NICU. You may also do some other core subspecialty rotations, um, and in some cases, international rotations too. During these rotations, you don't do any longitudinal clinic at all. You'll see here then you have some shorter single X rotations. These are two week or half month rotations and these will be a mix of things. Sometimes emergency medicine, your inpatient 19 rotations, um, your vacation will fall here, um, and some e shorter electives will fall here as well. Again, because these are X rotations, you don't do any longitudinal clinic at all. So then, finally, we get to our Y rotations. So these are half month rotations. These are typically going to be outpatient focused rotations, such as ambulatory, which is your outpatient acute illness experience, um, CEC, which for us is our behavior and development rotation, newborn nursery, adolescent, and again, some electives. When you're doing your Y rotations, you'll do a minimum of three half days per week of clinic. So you're in clinic quite a bit for for these Y blocks. And again, they're typically outpatient rotations, so you can really focus on outpatient medicine. So this is a table that really summarizes a lot of the things that I've just mentioned, um, some of the differences between your X blocks or rotations and Y blocks. One of the other things that you'll notice on the right side is that we've also been able to add in some procedure time to your Y rotations, some career exploration days where you can spend time with faculties in an area of interest that you might have. You'll also have some academic days, and these are half days where you're not scheduled for any clinical 
responsibilities. And you can use that to work on a presentation, to catch up on board review or board prep, or maybe even to schedule a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment and do some of those things that are need to be done during daytime hours that are sometimes hard in the middle of a, of a busy residency schedule and life. So I mentioned we're participating in a national pilot study and as part of this, we have to measure outcomes. And I'm happy to say after one year of participation in the X plus Y scheduling pilot, we have very high resident satisfaction. 85% of our residents said that they prefer X plus Y scheduling over the way we used to schedule. There's also high faculty satisfaction. 70% of our faculty said they prefer X plus Y scheduling to our previous method. Both residents and faculty uh, have said that there's increased time for teaching in both the inpatient and outpatient setting, and we've had a, a dramatic reduction in inpatient handoffs. Now, continuity with patients remains unchanged at this point, and the number of clinic days and visits we can't really interpret um, because, like so many things, it was affected by COVID-19. But all in all, we consider our participation in this pilot a success. Our residents seem to really like it, and we found it to be a good change for our program. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us on our interview day, and we're looking forward to meeting you when you come for your interviews. Thanks.